Hey, what is going on everyone and welcome finally to patch 6.0. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of a review video of the patch. Uh, and I think that the first thing that's on everyone's mind or what this should be as it is on mine is where the F is Cosmic Crucible. We have a brand new set of patch numbers and yet lo and behold it's not here. So my guess is that maybe they actually took some of the feedback under advisement and decided that it wasn't fit for purpose yet. Uh, so take that as a good thing or a bad thing but seeing this delayed even more is a bit concerning and makes me wonder if we'll ever get it. Anyways, uh, you know, we're going to go over each of the aspects of the new patch uh, generally and decide whether or not this will be any good or not. Of course, anything that requires a little bit more attention to detail, likely this will happen in a separate video, uh, but we'll try to go over everything. Uh, without further ado, let's get this show on the road. And I think the first obvious place to start really is with the brand new characters. So this is where we're going to start here. So I have them in a part, well, uh, yeah, D don't ask why I have all these other characters hearted. Uh, so Agatha Harkness, Doctor Strange, or sorry, yeah, Agatha Harkness, Doctor Doctor, Doctor Strange Heartless, Jesus. Uh, we're going to be, we're calling him Evil Strange. He's Evil Strange to me. Uh, we have Madeline Pryor, who is, we're going to be talking a little bit about the Marauders rework. I'm not going to go into big detail on that one, though. If you want to take a look at the kits and what, what really happened there, uh, do check out one of the content, one of the Envoys uh, videos. I, you know, they have it pretty good there. We have Morgan Le Fay, and of course we have Wong. Now, some people are a bit upset that this is comic book Wong, and same with Agatha's comic book Agatha, not the MCU version, but hey, it is what it is. Um, so one thing that I do want to point out is their uniques as well, if you weren't in my Discord channel when I mentioned it. So Wong is Focus Chi. Uh, Morgan Le Fay is Tempered Osmium. Now, of course, this is the newest unique, and we'll talk a little bit about this going forward as well uh, in a bit. Uh, we have Madeline Pryor, who is Astral Energy. Uh, so that's similar to characters like Phoenix uh, and Icarus. Uh, Doctor Strange Heartless, who is going to be Prometheum. Now that's similar to Gamora. I think that's the most one that I remember recently. And Agatha Harkness is going to be Arcane Magic. So... Magic, I guess, and Moon Dragon, Ebony Maw, that kind of thing. Uh, so it's actually quite a bit of a mixed uh, bag here in terms of uniques, which is good. You know, they're not all stacked with uh, the same unique. They're also not all Tempered Osmium, which is a good thing as well. So I'm, I'm fairly happy going forward. Now, in terms of the character shards, this is pretty important. So Agatha is 100. Uh, Strange Heartless, we know, is actually going to be a campaign event. So that's actually pretty good because I thought that he was one of the best characters uh, of this patch as far as the Darkhold teams go, uh, outside of Morgan, of course. I thought that he was one of the other ones that you kind of wanted to have at a high star level. And because he is that blaster damage dealer of the team, I'm really happy that he is a campaign event. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit more about his campaign event because they've made adjustments or they are making adjustments to this going forward as well. Madeline Pryor is a 45 shard unlock, so uh, I don't know. It could be either a Blitz or something else. Uh, Morgan Le Fay, we know how that's going to be through the Pestilence event, and Wong is 100 shards. I'm actually placing my bets that Wong is going to be a Blitz release. And so for Agatha Harkness, that kind of, to me, kind of puts... I don't think it's going to be a Blitz. I think it's going to be like a Milestone event. I think it could be a store, a Milestone store event. But regardless, it's going to be, you know, like an Echo or like a Morbius or, or a Magic even, something like that. So that's probably what I kind of estimate now for the team. So uh, Madeline have no idea, and frankly, I don't really care too much because I think the Marauders rework is a bit of a trap. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, so they did do some reworks uh, for the Marauders team writ large. You basically are putting Madeline Pryor in place of Sabretooth. Uh, so you would have Madeline Pryor, uh, Emma Frost, Sinister, Strife, and Mystique, because now Strife has some call-outs for Mystique as well. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole details there, but yeah, they did get reworked. Um, am I going to be engaging in those characters? Probably not, because I think that it's a bit of a bait-and-switch for Mutant Gear that I think that you're going to regret doing that if you do it. But we'll probably have separate videos to talk about that later on. Now, what I want to move on forward to talk about is the uh, campaign event trait for uh, Strange Heartless, and why this is kind of more important, and of course there'll be a separate video on this, this is the unyielding trait, and um, it's not bad. But what's important about this is that uh, there is going to be a brand new heroic difficulty mode for this, and I want to kind of just pivot really quick 
not to msf.gg, I had that up, oops, uh, the uh, blog post which is, has the patch details here. So you can see here that I have highlighted event campaign updates uh, with new heroic difficulty and updated rewards. Heroic difficulty will reward, oops, reward teal gear and completing a heroic difficulty mission automatically earns the first time rewards for both hard and heroic. So how it's going to be now is I think that medium is now the new easy and then we have hard and then we have heroic. So I don't know how strong Heroic is going to be. It might be a little bit more challenging, maybe, you know, and actually I would uh, enjoy something that's a little bit more challenging than, the, you know, the hard mode has been about 30k power enemies that have kind of just rickrolled over and it's not been, you can auto it basically all the way through. Um, what I am expecting, and we'll see, and I'll have to do some new calculations, of course, when this comes live uh, for the event, is that it is giving teal gear, but my guess is it's probably just duplicating the kind of gear that you get in the purple gear for the hard mode, the existing hard mode, and probably just replicating that into teal gear. I don't see this being like a farmable teal gear, if that makes sense. I just see it as a first time teal gear reward. But of course, closer to the date and when we get that known, you know, we'll have a look at that and see what it looks like. But that's kind of my expectations for that. Nonetheless, though, it is a little bit more stuff, I guess, and I'm looking forward to the challenge. So that's why the unyielding trait actually makes a little bit more of a difference, because if it is a lot harder, now it depends on how high the enemies are, um, which characters you decide to take in will matter. However, just looking at my roster, you can tell that it's actually probably not that bad. Why the hell would you ever use Kree minions down there? Uh, but otherwise, there's some pretty good characters in here, and it doesn't look all that bad. You don't get like a full set of characters in terms of the, uh, you know, your, uh, the team traits, but you do get Scarlet Spider. Sp Spider Punk was down here, and then you have some young Avengers as well you have some Gamora and Nebula so it doesn't look too bad overall so yeah moving on to the next trait though and this is going to be really really important and I want to talk about this one is the disciple tag so what this is going to be and 99% certain this is going to be because the link that it is in msf.gg is quoted as DD live so what this means is probably the site 99% chance that the disciple trait is going to be the next pocket dimension. So it seems like we are going to probably going to be getting one this patch. There are uh, 18 characters available here, including Strange Heartless. And it's not terrible for me, but it might be terrible for some other people. Now, you have Ghost Rider and Morbius, uh, both part of the Dark Hunters. Also, Scarlet Witch, who I guess is not only part of Darkhold with Strange Heartless, but also part of the Supernatural trait with Ghost Rider. Uh, you have Black Bolt, Standalone. I probably wouldn't use him. The only healer, the only proper healer in this setup is Night Nurse. So, last time when we had the original Pocket Dimension, we had Shuri as the main healer. It seems like now Night Nurse is going to be the main healer for this second Pocket Dimension. We have Iceman and Kate bishop and then it kind of goes downhill from there uh we have magneto mysterio cable uh black widow and nick fury so you could see this pairing together too this might be okay uh mystique i don't know i guess mystique and magneto there's some some synergy there ultimus yo-yo so you could run yo-yo in some of your team comps as well the problem is if you run yo-yo with nick fury then you have some issues with nick fury summons with his shield security that deactivates yo-yo's passive kind of making it crap and then we have korath and shocker don't even bother with these don't even bother with mysterio frankly um so some of your best choices i'll be doing separate videos on this as well uh ghost rider morbius possibly Scarlet Witch because she has this new redistribution, heal and redistribution. So that alongside Night Nurse, frankly, you're, <laughs> this is a weird one, right? Because it, it, depending on how difficult it is, you know, like Night Nurse is your only healer. And I know a lot of people didn't necessarily invest in Shadowlands and especially players who may have joined over the last nine months probably also don't have Night Nurse. So this is a tricky situation as far as support characters go. Uh, maybe you could healer ISO this though and just kind of brute force your way through. Uh, but my guess is you're going to have to use some of these more meta characters and we'll see where we go from there. So that's Pocket Dimension 2 on the horizon which sounds pretty interesting. Uh, let's talk about the new costumes because that's a thing, right? We have five new costumes here. So I was trying to remember who it was. Now we're going to start with Black Bolt. I think that's the first one here. And we have this new a Strike Anniversary Black Bolt. So most likely this will be free-to-play friendly because the last time we had it was Nick Fury. I think it was this time last year, actually, the third anniversary. And that was the Nick Fury costume. Um, I mean, Black Bolt's not really that used right now, but maybe in the future if they ever get some Inhuman Royal characters, this might be okay. Uh, but I have nothing much more to say about Black Bolt. Now, the second one, I think a lot of these are characters I don't really use much right now. Uh, Misty Knight, we have Misty Knight, whatever, Private Eye, so this is like a classic version of Misty Knight. 
Uh, it's okay, but don't really use Misty Knight all that much either. Uh, third one on the list is actually uh, Storm is another one. So this is a more of a classic Storm as well. I actually like this, but once again, I don't really use Storm all that much. So it is what it is, I guess. And none of these, as far as I'm aware, are available to purchase in the costume store at this time. Usually every patch we get at least one that's like kind of buyable in the store. We have a Moon Knight costume as well. This is related to the TV show, which is starting pretty soon, I think. This is Marvel Studios' Moon Knight, Mr. Knight. Uh, it is what it is as well. Uh, I don't really use Shadowland a ton. My Moon Knight's gear 12. Don't really know I'll be putting more gear into him because he's a Mystic character. And Mystic uh, gear is at an all-time crunch right now. And finally, we have Polaris. I actually kind of like this, but once again, I don't really use Polaris that much. Uh, this is 2020 X-Factor from the Krakoa era, and it, it's kind of neat. I actually kind of like it, but once again, I don't really use these characters. So a lot of the characters that they give costumes for are characters that I don't really use to any high degree. Like, I don't have them, like, above 100k. I'm not using them daily by any means. So none of the co even Black Bolt, who I have 150k, I don't use them daily either. So none of the costumes that came this patch are really characters that I use daily. And it's a little bit unfortunate because I only really care more if it's, like, I'm something I'm going to see a bit more frequently. Curious if they have any animation changes because sometimes they do. But, um, yeah, they don't really mention this stuff either. So moving on from that, uh, the next thing that I want to talk about here in today's video is going to be the minions that were removed from the red star orbs finally oh yeah and a uh, strange heartless is in the red stars now of course because his offers are available as well so we have an elite six orb and an elite seven orb i have one seven and one six i almost have two no i have one and a half sixes uh but the good thing is is that they're all gone so now the individual chance of pulling a character is 0.54 percent now i forget what it was before this but it was most likely lower than that because they would have removed anywhere from like 20 to 30 minions from this orb so that's really really good uh, i think outside of the focus period you're probably going to notice this a lot more where the numbers would be higher that's only because uh, strange is 15 percent right now but now rest assured that if you want to pull uh, uh, an orb you're not going to get a minion which is really amazing personally though i'm going to be saving my elite six and seven orbs i think for morgan just in case because she's a legendary character <laughs> I think it's probably more likely that you're going to get a legendary character at that star level quicker than you will a standard character. Because standard characters, when it comes to farm ability, is still shit. It's still at an all-time low. That's something else I want to talk about in a separate video, farm ability, especially with the lack of Cosmic Crucible. A lot of us thought that Cosmic Crucible was going to be coming around for patch 6.0, and it's not. So that puts farm ability even more into question than it already was. So... Uh, the next thing is the Tempered Osmium we talked about for Morgan Le Fay. So now you can find that in the Blue Gear Raid Orb. Uh, sorry, not the Blue Gear Purple Gear Raid Orb <laughs> for that. Uh, the Orange Elite Orbs for the orange ones. I wish I had more of them, but you'll be able to find this on the left pillar here. Tempered Osmium should show up. Yeah, it does here at 0.19%. Uh, you're also going to find it in the Teal Gear Raid Orb for the teal version, albeit super rare. Now, oh, it's in the center, I think, actually. I forgot which one here. So, albeit a pretty rare, uh, but yes, it is in there. So, just double-checking that, yes, it is in the other orbs. So, that's really good there. You can also find it, if you're willing to spend Elite War credits, I don't know what they're planning on doing with this, frankly, because a lot of people are like, is the Teal War Orb coming? It's not here right now, so are they going to give it to us? I don't know. Are you guys going to pull for this? But it should be here in the left pillar as well for Tempered Osmium. So, I mean, I guess there's not really a huge imperative for it right now. You are going to need 61 of those to get uh, Morgan Le Fay through to gear 15. But I guess it's not a huge issue right this second. So, I'm curious. Let me know in the comments down below, guys, what your plans are as far as Elite War Creds. Are you going to continue to save or are you going to open any of these for the Tempered Osmium? Because I'd really love to know. Now, uh, another thing is that we have a new event coming, although we don't have a specific date for it. Uh, it's the fourth anniversary event. It's called Celebration Incantation. Uh, and so that was listed here in the mail. And you can see here, and it looks like it's going to be rewarding some Tempered Osmium as well. Whether or not it's, it's orange or teal, I don't know. But it does say that we're going to be getting some Dark Hunter and Web Warrior shards. Maybe we're going to get some newer character shards. That would be great. And that's how you're going to get the Black Bolt Anniversary costume as well. Some minis as usual. So probably a milestone of some sort, like they always are every time there's an anniversary event. Or it's a store. Could be a store, but my guess is it's going to be some combination of either a store or a milestone or something like that. So, of course, I'll have a video come closer to the time. 
Um, and also for the record that we also I'll bring this up really quickly. Uh, Dr. Strange Heartless's event is on April the 5th. So that is a Tuesday. That's uh, exactly two weeks from today. So if you do get a hold of Strange Heartless early, you're going to have a two week head start on the free to play scrubs like myself because I don't have enough cores to unlock him and I'm definitely not paying for him. I think that's pretty much it. Like I said, I'm not going to be going over the Marauders rework in this video here today because I think that there's a little bit more to talk about. But to be honest, I don't really, I'm not really going to be engaging in that. And I think it's a little bit baity. So I'm not sure, even though I have my Marauders, you know, fairly high leveled up, I'm not sure it's really something at this point that I really want to engage in because I just, it's war defense and I just don't see the longevity of it. I, I, I honestly do not think that the reworks are anything overly substantial to make them viable outside of war. I'm not going to use this. I'm not going to gear them up for Dark Dimension 5. It's just not happening. Um, but, you know, there's going to be some people out there who want to buy Madeline Pryor who want to really just put the... And the other thing, too, is actually I want to talk about this really quick. Is that by, by engaging with this, it also means that you're not going to have Emma Frost available for, say, if you use a, a hybrid combo uh, with the Eternals for that speed meta portion of, you know, whoever you're using it on. So uh, that becomes a little bit of an issue as well. And frankly, I think the Eternals Emma combo, that speed meta, is a little bit more valuable than the Marauders on the War Defense. But that's just me and just my thoughts. And so that's where we're going to end the video because I think that pretty much covers everything. Uh, let me know if I missed something particularly, but I am really disappointed that we're not getting uh, Cosmic Crucible. When that going to come? Uh, when's that going to come? I have I have no idea. But frankly, because we didn't get the store, that means we're not getting character shards or farmability in the Cosmic Crucible store, and we're not getting extra teal gear, which we thought we were going to get as well as a result of that store in that game mode too. So yeah, that's the end of this quick review. Actually, no, it wasn't a quick review, so my bad, everyone. But uh, we're going to have some more focused details on some of the things that I mentioned in this video uh, in the days and weeks ahead, of course. So until next time, everyone, enjoy Patch 6.0. And I'll see you when I fuck that up. But it doesn't matter. I'll see you when I see you <laughs> boil on signing out.